Hello everyone and welcome back to Hoshi Soda no Memoria and in the last episode we witnessed the first kiss between uh, Isuzu and the protagonist and we also found out that apparently the director of the planetarium is uh, the protagonist's father. Apparently. Anyway, let's continue. It's awfully warm this morning. The weather is clear like after the passing of a storm. Hibarigasaki hardly ever has storms. Even if there were to be any, they tend to move towards the sea. A day with summer-like weather like this may very well be a gift from the sun before we, uh, b what? Before we transition into winter. I feel embarrassed as it feels like I'm being blessed. Aoi-san, good morning. Aoi passes our house on the way to school. She stops with her eyes looking down. She doesn't walk off by herself first. She manages to return a proper greeting. Thanks to that, I don't know what to say either. I open my mouth to say something out of ne necessity. Aoi-san. I don't really get it, but she rejects me. We said our farewells as soon as the observation session ended yesterday. Aoi didn't turn up to dinner either. I didn't pay a visit to her room, it was hard for me to face her then too. And now after a night's sleep we're in this awkward situation. If I knew that this was going to happen I should have sent Aoi a message beforehand. I should have confirmed her feelings. I haven't properly confessed yet. We are not a couple yet. Even if our lips had joined, we have to make it clear through words. Otherwise it won't feel complete. Aoi is right in front of me. A gap that I want to close yet can't. Our distance has become this close already. Aoi-san. Upon hearing my voice, she raises her head just a little. Well, um, you could say that I have something important to say. I, yeah, this. I want to tell you something. Yeah, you must. Is that your answer? So, so just then please listen. She jolts up. Her eyes are focused entirely on the ground. But her words are almost in denial. She doesn't run away. Awkward, frightened, yet she doesn't back away. Which means that she probably knows. Aoi-san, I... Perfect timing! And then my idiot of a sister barges in. Yeah. I look away immediately when my eyes meet with Aoi's. Flushed face, an expression like she's about to cry. She walks on ahead. Anyway, get changed if you don't want to get brought in for questioning by the SRC. We're going on ahead. Seems that the weather has also gotten into Chinami. We both ended up chasing after Aoi, who had gone on ahead. Aoi puts on an expression that says, save me. ちなみにかかしはいる。What? If you ask me, we've seen glimpses of her true nature a countless number of times already. Anyway, do you want a boyfriend or something, Chinami? 
And which bastard might that be? The weather is really nice this morning, don't you think? Oh, he says this standing alone. Yeah, this isn't your route. Jinami stares at her blankly. <laughs> her nuclear bomb of love is going to blow people up too. Aoi's face turns bright red. She still has her voice like she's about to burst into tears and her face is pointing downwards so that I can see her face. She nervously grabs onto my clothes. Oh, she just said this one. I want to believe that it means the same thing as being her lover. Good thing that Shinami isn't getting any weird ideas. Aoi quickly releases her grip. She murmurs to herself weakly. That's why I have to do this properly, as soon as possible. After we pass through the school gates, being different school years, we would part at the entrance. I tell her before that. Aoi-san, I love you. As soon as possible. Aoi was surprised, naturally. Yeah. And then my idiot of a sister nullifies my confession. Aoi-san, I'll see you later. I'll do it somewhere without Chinami. Aoi opens her lips as if to say something but closes them again. She walks towards the school building with her head down. Chinami dashes after her. And Chinami has uh, Okaken activities after school, so she'll probably leave Aoi alone then. I can meet Aoi during lunchtime too, but it'll be difficult to be alone with her seeing how everyone would be there too. It'll have to wait until after school. But that'll mean uh, taking a day off from the Tenkuru. Aoi-san! I ambush Aoi in front of her classroom after school. Want to go home together? She gets startled. Her face turns red and she looks down. I told them that I'll be taking today off just then. We have a competition to enter, so today will hopefully be the last time I do this. In order to get full permission to use the rooftop, we'll have to raise Aoi's attendance rate. Aoi-san, were you planning to show up to club activities today? Nope. Nothing comes after that. How about you take the day off today, just this once? And go home with me. After a significant amount of time passes, Aoi finally gives a small nod. She walks beside me with her head down. No conversation. We were together during lunch, but she didn't say much. She had her head down nibbling at her sweet bun. We had tried feeding her, but she didn't take any of it. However, the only thing that she doesn't do is run away from me. Aoi-san. Are you free after this? If you don't mind, do you want to hang out with me? Will you go on a date with me? Her shoulders perk up. If there's anywhere you, uh, that you want to go, I'll take you. But Australia will have to wait a little. Oh, we might be different, but I don't have a passport. Hell, I don't even have any money. A short statement. Her words come out in mumbles. The harbor by the science society. She shakes her head violently. I respond with an understood. Well then, how about we catch the train and go to the beach? 
It might be the wrong time of the year, but you can still bask in the sun if it's this warm. I recall the 30 degrees Celsius days over here in the past. After splitting up to fetch our swimming gear, we meet up in front of the house before heading for the beach. Oh, so we have another beach episode just with Aoi. Ah, you're done. <laughs> Aoi, who had changed into her swimsuit, walks along the sand. Perhaps because she's feeling embarrassed as she's covering her skin with her arms. Her face has been flushed ever since we came back on the way home from school. Aoi son, aren't you cold? <laughs> if you're cold, uh, there's the beach house. She shakes her head frantically. You would rather stay on the beach? She gives a light nod. We are not the only ones here. There were a few surfers and some people walking along the beach or sitting on rocks. Though there weren't any people swimming as expected. While it may be warm today, the sea breeze is still a bit chilly for a swimsuit. I think it's best we don't swim. The sea water will probably be very cold. A light knot. Why don't we just take a walk? Another light knot. As I walk ahead, uh, she follows behind me with small steps. Since she's moving slowly, I walk at a leisurely pace. We arrive beside the ocean water. Feeling the water brush against my feet, I determine that it's not at a temperature to be swimming in. If we splash water on each other like other couples do, we would almost certainly catch a cold. Want to go back? She gives another light nod. She follows behind me with small steps. She hasn't spoken for a while now, I'm feeling a little uneasy. Want to get something to drink? No response. What do you want to drink? No response. Maybe I should choose for you. A light nod. Okay then, I'll be right back. She follows behind me with small steps. You can wait here, you know. She shakes her head frantically. She finally says something. But I'll be back soon anyway. After saying that, she looks at uh, as far downwards as possible. I take hold of Aoi's hand. I feel her strong trembling. Okay then, let's go together. She nods with her head still down. Filling with the warm drinks in our hands, we both sit down on the beach. The sand isn't hot, unlike in summer, nor was it warmer than we had expected. Our bodies start to get cold. The distance between Aoi and myself is closer than when we were walking. We pass time wordlessly, simply listening to the sound of the waves breaking against the shore. The sun starts to lower in the sky. The temperature also starts dropping. The few people on the beach start heading home in small groups. As those people leave, the coldness becomes more apparent. That's why I move my shoulders closer. In front of the vast ocean dyed red, we gaze into the horizon brimming with light. The boundary line to some faraway land, a line that separates the world into two. Aoi san. Nevertheless, the world would become one as the setting sun dissolves that boundary line. Will you go out with me? I embrace Aoi, who had given a timid nod. What? Are we at this stage already? Well, I guess I have to cut then. I'll see you in a second! <gasps> Isuzu is standing on the road as I leave my house. She gives a small nod upon seeing me. Good morning, Isuzu. I said I was going to use your first name. She has her head down with her cheeks all red. Were you waiting for me just then? Though usually you just briskly walk on ahead. Want to go to school together? She gives a slight nod and follows closely behind. Want to hold hands? But I want to hold your hand. I guess it's embarrassing after all. 
How's your body doing? But I'm worried. It's quite a shock when you tell me that. Yeah, I'm just worried about a girl that I like. If it's difficult to walk, then I'll hold your hand. Isuzu points her gaze downward, appear at the red ears between her hair. Really? I'm sorry. Then what should I do? Isuzu lifts her hand timidly. I decide to take that hand. Upon Chinami's entrance, Isuzu jumps away from me. Wait, that sentence wasn't complete. Uh, Chinami is using her swimming bag, she uses it at the beach instead of her school bag. What do I think, Unichan? Here, fetch! Isuzu stares at me with her face all red. Wasn't that my fault too? She walks off by herself. <laughs> anyway, change your bag if you don't want to get caught by the SRC. We're going ahead. Well, that's impossible considering he's Akaki's personality. We end up chasing after Isuzu who had gone off alone. Ignoring Isuzu's ignoring of her, <laughs> Chinami continues to speak. Isuzu, who usually does things slowly, quickly shields her neck using her hands with unimaginable speed. She's expecting me to save her. Hey, Jinami, there's something important that I have to tell you about Isuzu and myself. Gah! Don't kick me in the shin, Isuzu! Gah! Why am I the scapegoat? She walks off hurriedly. Jenny chases after her cheerfully. I sigh as I am being left behind. Jinami might find out very soon. She'll probably find out regardless of whether we tell her or not. The same goes for Suzuha and Aunt Chino. We have dinner together with our means of addressing each other and the atmosphere. It will only be a matter of time before we are exposed. I feel sorry for Isuzu who is trying to hide it, but we have to prepare ourselves for the worst. Though this is by no means something that we should be feeling guilty about. Isn't that right, Isuzu? We'll tell everyone after we accomplish what we've set out to do. I'm going to suggest to her about fixing the telescope tonight. <laughs>